Okay. Now the first thing Jane will do is center the clay. Centering is by far the most important and the hardest thing to learn in throwing on the wheel. If she doesn't get it just rightly centered later when you're trying to actually make the pot, it's going to be flipping all over the place. The first thing she'll be doing is called coning, where she's coning the clay up and then bringing it back down. And what this does is center the inside of the clay. If you had a very small piece, like a one pound piece, you could get away with coning it just one time. But a little bit bigger piece she needs to do that a couple of times. Something even bigger she might do more than that. So the piece is pretty much already centered. And that's because Jane has centered about 82,000 <laughs> pieces in her career. But again, the centering is so, so important, and it's also by far the hardest thing to learn in throwing a pot. Once the piece is centered, then, then the rest flows much easier. Now, Jane does not use a splash pan. A lot of potters use a splash pan around the, uh, the wheel. She doesn't use a whole lot of water, and she keeps pretty good control of all the little excess clay, flipping it off. Uh, she scrapes it off with the sponge and puts it over there to her left on the wheel. And you notice that she has the... Uh, her, everyone has a different technique in, in uh, centering and keeping uh, the clay control on the wheel. And this, this clay body that Jane's using is her own custom blend. It uh, has very fine grog, just a little bit more than porcelain, and she likes the, the brown reddish color. Okay, now she's opening the clay. She's open from the inside, and we can see that the piece is still centered. If she hadn't centered it correctly and also wedged it before, once she opened it like that, then the piece could become uh, no longer centered, be wobbly a little bit, because the inside wouldn't be centered, but it is now. So again, her clay, uh, it's very important to have the right sort of um, wetness to the clay, too. A bowl that she's, she likes to have pretty moist clay when she throws, but a big flat bowl that, like she's making can't be too wet, because if it is, it will collapse. Jane has her clay made by a company in North Carolina. Yeah. And we get about a ton of that clay delivered to our home about three times a year. And how do you, how do you take a ton of clay off the truck? <laughs> it comes in 50 pound boxes. It's also important when you're throwing a piece to have consistent thickness throughout the pot. Um, you're fine when you're starting to learn to throw that your pots will have a tendency to be very thick at the bottom and very thin at the top. But you can see Jane is gathering the clay at the bottom and bringing it to the top. And as you press your fingers together at the bottom, you're pressing fairly hard together. And as the fingers come closer to the top, the pressure becomes less and less. And that's one of the secrets to having um, consistent thickness from the top to the bottom. Also, once you've thrown so many pots, you can feel about how thick the pot is all the way up and know instinctively how much pressure to apply to the pot. Um, she's adding water to the top with the sponge and the, that water trickles down both the inside and the outside <clears throat> and makes the pot slippery so her fingers can slide up the clay. If the clay is too dry, your fingers will have a tendency to stick to the clay and that will, of course, destroy the piece. 
So even though she's adding water, you don't want to add too much because again, it will cause the piece to collapse, especially a piece like this. And you don't want the water to collect in the bottom either because that would make the bottom of the pot too soft. So you can see even though she drops the water in at the top, she uses the sponge in the bottom of the piece to uh, soak up that water. There she's dropping a little bit of water down it again. Pulling the clay up like that is the technical term. She's pulling the clay from the bottom up to the top. Jane's using an electric wheel. Almost all production potters anymore do not use kick wheels, but use electric wheels, which actually does give you now, right there, she was collecting the water that had accumulated in the bottom of the, of the pot. Almost all professional potters um, use electric wheels now. You get more control. The right foot is on a, the control. So she's now slowing. You can see that the, the piece is going a little bit slower as the work is becoming more delicate. Whereas earlier when the piece was smaller and when she was centering, the, the wheel was going much faster. Okay, now we're going to be cutting off some of the clay there, the extra clay at the bottom. Now this is because we, the clay is this texture and we don't want it, and also she's creating a little ridge at the very bottom by removing that clay, and she'll be able to use a wire on that ridge and make a nice clean cut at the bottom. They're dripping a little bit more water along the side to keep just the right wetness on the piece. And you can see the pieces, the wheels going even more slowly now as the pot moves out further and becomes more thin, the, the work becomes more delicate. And this is the getting to the dangerous area where um, there's a possibility of the bowl collapsing. So Shane, Jane has to be very careful and have just the right amount of wetness. And this is where having the right wetness in the clay is very important. Jane's now using a rib um, to press down on the clay very gently and shape the piece in the uh, way she wants it. Now, even though she's using a rib, it, kind of makes the surface flat. We're still going to see um, some throwing marks still in the clay, especially on the outside, but there'll still be some present on the inside. One of the properties of the clay that allows it to maintain its, its shape in this uh, very unusual, difficult piece to throw is the grog that's in the clay. Uh, porcelain clay has no grog, and that makes it, that sort of clay even more difficult to throw into shapes like this. Um, clay that has a lot of thick grog is a lot easier to throw into a shape like this than the sort of clay that Jane is using, which has very, very fine grog. The grog is like the, um, the roughness. Like the sand that's in the clay. And this, uh, her grog is so fine. Yeah, you really can almost not feel it in the finished piece. You can see that the wheel is going very slowly now as Jane is putting the finishing touches on the shape of the piece.